what's popping y'all today i want to cover something that i think is so overblown and overrated it's the doja cat but not just doja cat but doja cat demonic satanic all this other stuff sure i do believe there are some elements of it actually no nah, 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 let me keep it a buck let me get straight to the point the, this is all just fraud by Doja Cat. This is all just attention seeking. And we just need to look into the history of Doja Cat. And I think everyone's playing into her hand. Number one, Doja Cat's one primary driver. By the way, the song Paint the Town Red, fire. Doja Cat's music is all fire. I've been saying this for... When did I say this first? A year ago, two years ago, where I said Doja Cat is the best artist in the game right now? Best rapper in the game, as a matter of fact. That means, yeah, better than Drake. She's been dropped. Her past two albums is better than Drake's past two albums. You can't argue that. And I did say that before he dropped the album with 21. So make sure to add that to your note. Although I do enjoy replay value, Doja Cat's last album. I think it was Planet Her. More than I enjoy, or more than I have listened to 21 Savage and Drake's album, Her Loss. So Doja Cat's always been about attention, despite the talent. She is massively talented from when people pull up. Oh, she was on these webcams, not, you know, in these chat groups getting attention. She was even in these chat groups after she was popular. She was doing the whole meme thing. If you guys remember the Moo song, that's the first song that really took her over the hump and made her internet viral. Then after that, look at the song that she had with Tyga, Juicy. Look at Juicy, look at Moo. And these are two different eras of Doja Cat. And tell me, yeah, this is a person that's uh, satanic and demonic and whatever else it may be. Come on. This, this is two completely different aesthetics. And she maximized both of them because that was, well, she was at the forefront of the trend. But that was what was going to be trendy at that time. Doja Cat's always consistently said controversial stuff just to stir up attention. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. I honestly think she has this weird relationship with negative talent to kind of keep herself as the underdog because if everybody just loved her all the time i think her ego's already big enough in a good way that when people just constantly and incessantly give her praise she's like oh i don't deserve this like what's going on so she tries to get herself some negative reactions and just keep in the limelight if she didn't want to be in the limelight like she said oh i want to retire blah blah she could do that although she has obligations but she would always go on ig live that's not part of her contract that she has to go on ig live and interact with fans she loves this stuff she loves the attention and what is a better driver for attention than you know the devil and lucifer and all this stuff because we just saw someone do it. if you if you're a popular artist like let's say an actual star at this point in time and you make a song or some imagery and the song is very very catchy to a mass audience and you use this imagery and capitalize on it you're going to have a top 10, if not a, a number one song. Remember Lil Nas X? Lil Nas X did the whole thing, twerking on the devil. That was shock factor. But the song was catchy enough that people were like, yo, that's, that kind of hits. So they were listening to it. That went number one, I think. It definitely went at least top 10. I don't got Billboard ingrained in my mind, but I think it went number one. Now you've got Doja Cat, Paint the Town Red. That goes number one. And the whole rollout for the thing is Doja Cat getting these tattoos. I think she wanted to get these tattoos anyway. She's just going through this phase that's going to get her more attention and it is contrasting to any other female pop star or female rap star who else is doing what doja cat's doing appearance wise i mean she's shaving her head shaving her eyebrows she's getting these weird tattoos it is such a big contrast that it just migrates all the attention to her as opposed to let's say like the lottos or how would we ex better explain like for example Glorilla and Sexy Red. Now there's this kind of splitting of the fans where they're like, oh, these are these two are kind of the same person, but this one's more trendy, so I'll go with her. And there's a bunch of other artists in that realm. It used to be the dolls, like the Nicki Minaj copycats, and they all look the same. Lotto was one of them. And you'd be like, oh, these are kind of all the same person. They may have different music, which they really didn't, but they all look the same. So it divvies up the fan base. Whereas for Doja Cat, you're like, yo, this is a completely unique, bizarre individual that also makes great music. She was doing the Fashion Week thing, I think, where she came in all red. A bunch of different things. Realistically, this is kind of the Lady Gaga formula, if we're keeping it a bug. And Lady Gaga did this 10, 15 years ago. She would go, she would show up in the meat costume with the pita. And the reason why it kind of, as much as I am against kind of like imagery of satanic stuff and Lucifer and all this stuff, she didn't go as blasphemous as Lil Nas X did. And on, she just used the imagery. She didn't necessarily say, hey, this is the devil, this is Lucifer. Kind of just dark imagery. And people just constantly fall for the bait. 
this is where everything on the internet is engagement. And you got to think to yourself, hey, if there is something that I strongly disagree with and it pops up on my feed and I get an emotional reaction and I engage with it, you lost. And you have to keep that in your mind because that person just wants engagement. Now, if you block the person, that's probably the best thing you could ever do is ignoring. Like if this dropped and nobody paid attention to it, it would flop and people would stop doing it. They just do it because it's effective. Because it's not the quote unquote satanic people that are like, yo, we love this, we love this, we're paying attention to it. No, it's a reaction to all the people that are against it. So that's the first wave. The first wave is like, yo, Doja Cat's super demonic, this and that, uh, this is satanic, this is going against A, B, C, and D, connecting her to a bunch of all of these conspiracy theories. All these influencers on this side of the media. Now, I don't even think these guys believe it. But they believe that if they purport that she's connected to all of these conspiracies, that it will drum up their engagement. So they're willing to, I wouldn't say lie, but they're willing to embellish and play up what Doja Cat's doing in order to create engagement for themselves. Their viewers get an emotional reaction, and then they drum up the engagement more. They all checked out the song. Everyone has checked out the song at least once that quote-unquote hates it, and maybe some of them kept listening to it. So they all checked out the song at least once. Now it causes this reactionary engagement from the other side that think these people are crazy. And they're like, man, we can trigger them by listening to this? Yeah, let's, let's check this out. They check it out, and they're just, I guess, normal people, like people that are just going through society. They're not too invested into either side. They're like, whoa, this, this song's kind of hard. This is kind of fire. And they just listen to it passively. So now you're getting both sides. Some extreme people on both sides that are just arguing back and forth. But who won? Doja Cat and her record label. And the people that were getting you to invest your time, energy, and speech in terms of social media. Time, energy, and engagement, we'll call it, into promoting their stuff and promoting Doja Cat stuff. So the only person that loses is you if you're angry about it and don't enjoy the song. Now, if you enjoy the song and you just checked out the song, well, congratulations, you won. Well, you and Doja Cat won. You got a mutually beneficial relationship right there. Me, I like the song. I think a lot of this stuff is really, really overblown. Like, for example, Ghost Mane, yeah, that's that's a demonic character right there. From the beginning, this dude was kind of odd. He progressively, you know, got more and more demonic. He actually studies a lot of this stuff. He's actually real deal in the trenches. Doja Cat, she just, it's kind of like, you've ever seen that music video of Ruby Rose where she's with a bunch of bloods and she's got this red theme? She came in there, cosplayed as a blood, got all the people in there and left and went back to enjoying her life. That's what Doja Cat is doing. This Ghost Mane, that dude is invested. You look at Ghost Mane 2015 and you look at him now or a year ago, you're like, whoa, this guy progr <laughs> progressed, not in a positive way, if you look at it like that, but this guy went up the ladder and the steps to you know, more and more extreme appearance wise of this occult stuff that he studies and is a fan of and incorporates into his music. If you say Suicide Boys, like, oh, these guys are kind of demonic. I think they were more on the edgy side than actual like satanic people where I do think Ghost Mane is definitely more on the side of occultish. But these guys, that would make sense too. Doja Cat, Lil Nas X, come on, man. Really? Of course not. So yeah, pretty much every time, and this is why I dislike X or Twitter as a platform the most. You guys probably see me barely post on there. At the mind of HY, follow me on there. It is something that I've started to notice. I'll scroll my feed, and then I'll get something that triggers me in, in, a, in a way. And then I would start to reply, or I'll send it to someone. I'm like, whoa, 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 what am I doing? You guys have probably experienced that. You're like, whoa, this is not a positive experience. And then I started to just absolutely limit my time on there and i didn't want to create content on twitter that gets the maximum engagement which is doing the same thing to other people so i kind of just post more when i have like actual insights and something valuable to say maybe it might sound controversial but i will expand on it like i have another tweet about country music that i'm going to do a video on immediately after this but those i think those are more thought-provoking discussions as opposed to just engagement bait or rage bait which is what Twitter is full of now. And Doja Cat capitalized on that. So do I think Doja Cat is demonic, occultic, satanic, part of some cult? No, although Doja Cat did grow up in a bit of a cult. But that's a topic for another video. But yeah, let me know what y'all think about this in the comments. Like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you enjoyed. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.
Peace.